What's up guys, this is Coding Cleverly and today we're going to be talking about another sorting algorithm. The sorting algorithm that we're going to be talking about in this video is called Merge Sort. Before writing the code for it, I want to explain what Merge Sort is, give a little brief intro to what it is and how it works and all that stuff. Merge Sort was created by John von Neumann in 1945. The merge sort sorting algorithm is also called the divide and conquer algorithm. In a divide and conquer algorithm, the data is continually broken down into smaller elements until sorting them becomes very, very simple. Merge sort was the first of many sorts that use this strategy and is still in use today in many different applications. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to create this merge sort algorithm in Java. And before all of that, we have to look at the most important functional steps involved in this algorithm. The first is the splitting and the second is the merging. So this is the example of the merge sort algorithm. You can see on the top here, there is an array, input array. It's not sorted at all. And we use the merge sort algorithm. This is how it works. So at the end, you result with a completely sorted array. The algorithm recursively splits the input array until each element is in its own array. So you can see in this portion here that every single element, which was over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven elements are inside this array. Now you can see seven different arrays and each of those arrays have one single element. So this is that portion when we split. Merging on the other hand is when the algorithm compares and combines the elements of arrays until the input array is sorted. We're breaking this seven element array into two parts. So you can see four over here and three on this other side. And then after that, we break it up to two, two, and this would have two and then one. And then after that, you can see this is broken up, broke, 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 broke to independent parts. Once we're done with the splitting process here, we start the merge process from here. So right here, we have 38 and 27. Compare which one is smaller. So the smaller one will go in the first place and the larger one will go in the second place. Similar to this, similar to this, and the 10 will just appear as this. After that, we have these two sorted. So we're going to first find the smallest of all these two and we're going to find the smallest of these two separately. So here we have three as the smallest and then we have 27, 38 and 43. So this is how it's going to appear 9, 10 and then 82. Awesome. Now we're going to compare these two things and we're going to check which one is the smallest element from all of these. So three. Then after that, we have 9, 10, uh, 27, 38, 43 and 82. So this is how it's going to be appearing at the end. Here, I also want to add in that we're going to use the recursive process for this merge sort algorithm. In a recursive process, we always have a base case and a recursive case. So the base case is when we're going to call the sort method and that will just basically split everything until we have independent elements in every single array. So the base case is when we implement a recursive sort that splits the input array until each element is in its own array. So you can see over here and the recursive case is when our sort function requires that we split the input array into a left array and right array. So this one, when it's like left and right array, this is when we have the recursive case. First of all, we're inside the merge sort class and I'm going to have to create the sort method, the recursive sort method here. We're going to call it as public and we're going to have the int array as the return type. And we're going to call it as sort. It's going to contain an array of ints and it's going to be called as er. And now inside of this, we're going to get the length of the array. So we could say length is equal to er dot length. And there you go. We got an int length. If the length is less than or equal to one, this is our base case. So we're going to return the array. That's when all of the elements are in their independent array. And the recursive case will be this. So we're going to have the mid. And to get the mid of an array, we could use div, and we pass in the length of the array and it divides by two. So once we do that, we get a floor division. Suppose we had seven elements, like in our case, seven divided by two is 3.5. Floor div will be three. So it's third index, zero, one, two, three. It would, this would be the mid, the three one over here. And then after that, we want the um, left array and right array from here. So what we could do is that we could get from zero to the mid, zero, one, two will be the left portion, three, four, five, six will be on the right portion, something like that. Or we could do the other way around. So this is, this is one approach, meaning you have uh, four over here and three over here, but you could do the other way around as three over here and four over here. But you gotta keep that pattern similar throughout the whole thing. 
left array. So we're going to have the left array and we're going to assign it to arrays dot copy of range array zero from start to the mid. Similar to that, we're going to get the right array. So we're going to say right array. And we're going to say right a r r a y is equal to arrays dot copy of range and then we have the array similar one go from the mid this time to the length so now we're going to have to return this with the merge function and the merge function i'm going to be creating underneath this so we're just going to have this like merge this would be our merge function that would combine these two left arrays and right arrays so we're going to have the uh, method which is the recursive call here of uh, sort and we're going to pass in the left array and similar to that we're going to have to pass in the right so we're going to say sort and we can put the right array and put a semicolon at the end cool now we're going to have to add in the merge function specifier as public return type as an array of ints we're going to call this as merge and we're going to put an array left an array of right and in here we're going to create a merged array so we're going to say int merge and we're going to say the new int and we're going to have left dot length plus right dot length int right position and then we have int cur index Alright, so let me just summarize what I've done here. I created a merge function and it takes in the left array and right array. So when you create the merged array, you actually need to have it as the same size as your original input array. So we're going to have the length of that left and we're going to have the right. And we're just going to increment that and we're going to create a new array for that. The left pause will be the index on the left array and that would be from zero. Right pause will be the index on the right array and that would also be on zero. The current index will be the index on our new merged array. So that's why I created this. Now we're going to create a while loop. And here we're going to have left dot length is greater than left pause. Right dot length is greater than right pause until we have things inside the left array and right array we're going to use this loop so so if the left array's left position the current one is less than the right arrays and don't worry i'm going to explain this at the end as well so what's going to happen here is we're going to say merged and we're going to say cur index which is the final um, merged array and the current index will assign to the left and then we have left position on the other end if the right positions uh, array is smaller than the left so we could say else and we just have to do the other way around so we say merged merged index current index and we assign it to the right and we say right position like that and then after that we say right position and plus equal to one so that right position will equal to plus equal to one and at the end we also have the current index that's a very important we have to increment that all the time so there you go once you have everything here so for instance let's go through this one so this one and this one so this is left array right array left pause right pause and cur index so if the left arrays left pause is less than the right arrays right pause right 
So what we did is we added that three, we incremented that index of this to one. So after that is 27 will be compared with nine. Nine will be added and now this increment will turn into plus one over here. And now after that, 10 and 27 will be compared. Well, 10 will come here. So after that, this will be compared with uh, 27 and then 27 will be added. And then after that, 38 and uh, 82 and then 38 will be added. And then after that, we have 43. And uh, for when 38 was added, this increment will go till here. And after that, we have 43 and 82. So we know that 43 is smaller. So 43 will be added. Now, you know that the left array has no more values left, right? So whatever is going to be at the uh, other end, we're just going to copy paste it right inside here. So that's that's the meaning of this. Either it's in the right array or either if it's in the left array. For that code, the code that I'm going to add in the in the last portion is just going to make sure that everything is copied, uh, the remaining greater elements. So we just say array copy. This is our method. So it's called system.array copy. And we're going to say, first of all, the left um, array the left position, which is the index, the current index. Merged is the new array where we want to add it to. The current index is the index to which we want to add it to. And then we have the left dot length, which is the uh, length of the left array, uh, now minus the left position and the remaining elements, which are in here. Similar to that, we could just add the right one for this as well. So just say uh, right position over here. And we say right here. And over here we also have uh, so over here we didn't have to have minus it's gonna be right and left dot length and here we have merge and over here we have to have right right position and over here we have right so that should do that for us and once at the end we're done we're just gonna return our sorted array and that's the merged array now let's go into the main method and test this out. And we pass in some elements. Here we're gonna add in the same elements that we saw in the diagram, so 38, 27. Now we're gonna pass this inside the merge sort. So we're, first we're gonna have to create an object for merge sort. So I'm gonna say merge sort sorter. They go to new merge sort. Now that we created the instance here, we're gonna have to Call the method so that method is called sorter dot sort that's the merge sort and we pass in the an input array now if we want to have it displayed so input array and you know that the merge sort will also be called and and that's what we're going to be returning here in the sort function so we want it to be printed out so we could use the system dot out system dot out dot print ln and here we're gonna uh, put this in but before that we want the arrays function so that we have to add this arrays dot to string that returns the array as a string and it would be appearing at in our console screen as a string so this would be applied here and we're all set so let's just uh, make it smaller and show how our code looks so far we have a merge sort class inside of this. We have the sort function. The sort function is returning an int. Uh, the sorted at the end what we get, but first we're gonna have to call in merge and we pass in the left array and the right array. So this is the left and right array over here. It manages the merge process and once it's done, it returns the merged here, which will be returned from here, merge. And now we call it in the main function and we pass it in and print it out. So let's test it out. Let's go over here and say Java C and we say merge sort dot java and after that we just run the code so what we say is merge sort java and merge sort so now let's get prepared to see the output so this is not ordered 38 27 43 39 82 and when i run this we get an array fully sorted 3 9 10 27 38 43 and 82 so the runtime complexity for the merge sort algorithm is all when a log of n so it's in the best case, worst case, and the average case. So the, the runtime for the merge sort algorithm is O of n of log of n. That was it with the video. Hope you liked it. Give it a subscribe. Go support the channel. Be a patron. And like always, stay tuned for a new video.